All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Bud Doctor. Uh, I'm going to run a game for you called Star Tropics. It's an excellent gem on the uh, NES that everyone should play. Um, and uh, I'm the current world record holder, uh, and it's a pretty high execution run, so I'm going to be uh, mostly staying quiet, but luckily I've got two excellent commentators with me. I've got uh, the Tantalus and Vonnie Von, who have both uh, run this game in the past, um, and uh, they are very good at uh, commentating, so you're in for uh, a real treat. Um, so yeah, I'm going to... Just so you know, time starts on uh, when the uh, when the game uh, fades into the first area. Uh, so I will say go, uh, but I'll just start the timer uh, now so that we can get going. Um, yeah. All righty, looking forward to it. And we can do intros. Okay, and time three, two, one. And go. So hey guys, I'm I'm Tantalus. Uh, I last ran this game at 2017. That was the last time it was featured here. And uh, with me is Vani. Hi, how's everyone doing? And uh, we're gonna jump right into it. So uh, Star Tropics is a Zelda-inspired, I guess, RPG. You might re re have recognized the select screen. Um, it, it is exactly the same select screen, but it, it plays a little bit differently. It's a lot more linear of a game. And uh, we're, the first thing we have to do is we have to get a weapon. Um, we're, our, our goal in this game is to find our uncle. That's what the chief is telling us right now. Uh, we don't have time to talk to him, so we're going to go through as quickly as possible. Um, but a lot of times in this game, there are village, there's two different types of sections. There's the overworld, um, with usually as villages and NPCs, and there's the dungeons where the bulk of the action is held. Uh, in this particular overworld, we, we're going to talk to specific villagers that trip the flags for the guard to let us through to enter the first dungeon. Yeah, and obviously, uh, Bug Doctor is going to be doing this in the optimal order to talk to the bare minimum with taking the fewest steps possible in order to to achieve all of that. So here we have the we have the sister of the village chief. She is the shaman. She is hopefully we will only see her once. The only other time you would see her besides this is if you game over, and that will not be happening today, right, Buck Doctor? I hope. Okay. Uh, we should not see that that character again. So, got to go right into the first dungeon here. Uh, you can see Mike is equipped with his trusty yo-yo, uh, and we're gonna, these are actually very technical runes. Bug Doctor is going to make them look very easy as he does, and uh, we move right into the room. Uh, this is a good time to explain the point system. You're going to see Bug Doctor kill this rat in a second, and uh, you don't need to kill this rat. But by killing extra enemies, you actually lower the points value the game gives you at the end of the level, uh, which doesn't save you a lot of time, but the lower points you have, the less frames you have to count the end of the dungeon to watch your point score go up. So um, just minor things that we do to optimize the run. Um, and we're going to come into the first room that is a big change from the last time this was run here. We've changed the strat uh, where we're going to go for for the, for the jellies first, and then go for the rat with a sliding yo-yo, and bingo, Bug Doctor nails it perfectly. Yeah, as, as he does. Uh, this room, uh, so, so this game is designed to trick you. You can see that there's two paths that look like they're the obvious choice, uh, but the real path to go forward is not even revealed to you. Uh, this game does that a lot, and uh, we're going to point that out as we go through the game. Uh, there's even rooms in this this dungeon that make you reward you for exploring, and then uh, will will kill you for exploring, uh, it, the exact same way. So this this game definitely likes to mess with your mind a little bit, Bobby. Yes. Yeah, and what you saw there is he picked up this little torch sub weapon. There's going to be lots of different sub weapons that we'll see throughout the game, and they will all have a use of some sort. And first skip of the game coming up. It's one of the only skips you can do, but we'll just take a yeah. fireball from the boss and, and uh, damage boost through him. Contact damage with most bosses in this game is instant death, but in this case, the boss, uh, we have enough iframes from the fireball shot that we can walk right on through. And uh, he, he actually is skipped in Star Tropics 2 as well, so he, he never gets to fight. Yeah. yeah. You know, and one thing uh, that I want to point out is that 
what he just did right there is arguably the only glitch that you're going to see in this entire run. There are going to be no, like, skips or clipping out of bounds or sequence breaks or anything like that. It's basically going to be a glitchless run. And I think that's mostly due to the fact that we really haven't discovered any useful glitches that will help us during the course of the run. But, uh, I mean, you're going to see him play this game straight up, and you're going to see it done extremely well. I guess it's a good time to talk about that. So, th uh, before I get into that, this is our friend Navcom. He looks a little bit like Rob, and he's our guide in the submarine. So, this, the submarine is going to be how we travel the worlds and look for our uncle, and everyone gives us a nice uh, wave goodbye. Uh, the only other glitches that really exist in this game are, are wrong warp glitches, and they're very, very difficult to execute. No one's ever done it RTA. It's all been done via TAS. So um, they're not something that, that are currently practical. Right. Yeah, so here we have a, a dolphin mommy in distress who just comes up to the submarine and asks for help. So that sets us on our that sets us on our path here for chapter two. There's eight chapters in total, all of very varying lengths. Um, so what's going to be coming up here? Well, first of all, he has to talk to this lady, and then afterwards we're going to loop around and we're going to pick up a bottle. In so doing, there's going to be a question if we want to read the note again, yes or no. This is going to be the first real example of buffering inputs, where as it's scrolling up to ask the question, it's going to be holding to the right as well as A, and it's going to move over to the option and select it on the exact same frame. Like, you didn't even see the arrow pop up there uh, mm. because you can buffer all the inputs. And I know that's something we'll be talking about quite a bit as we go on. Yeah, and that, the buffering happens both in, in the action levels and the overworld. Um, so all of the text procedures that we do there, Bug Doctor is already holding A before the text dialogue's finished. Or it's not it's not a timing or mashing A. Uh, it's just it's the perfect way. It's the first actionable frame. Uh, to proceed. So we're getting ready to enter, enter a second dungeon here. Luckily, our submarine has a dolphin translator on it, and uh, we were able to speak dolphin. So, yes. and and we'll go into dungeon number two here. Um, so it's a good time to explain how the movement in this game works. This game is is on a grid. Um, most NES games are on a grid, but they're most of the time the character does not move on that grid. Uh, Mike does, and you're going to see that uh, throughout this dungeon especially. So Mike can only move within the square tiles of the map. He can't move between them. Um, and the other thing he can't do, um, while you see he can jump, he can't jump over things uh, without there being something to jump over. So if you jump, you're going to jump in place. And your bug is going to exploit that here by jumping and turning uh, while he moved forward. So he stood still when he jumped. And then it actually sets up the timing for the jumping blocks here absolutely perfectly. It's a frame-perfect yeah. setup. So uh, you can see all he had to do there was just buffer his inputs, and he moved right on through the room here. And we're going to encounter several rooms throughout this game where you have those sinking blocks. The timer for when they do their sinking cycle is always going to be fixed as soon as you enter the room. So Bug Doctor is going to know the precise timing of how much, how many, like down to the frames, how much he needs to buffer with his movements in order to get those cycles as quickly as possible. Our only offensive use of the baseball bat there. Right. Uh, we will <laughs> use the baseball bat again in the room. Oh, killed the puff. Very nice. Yeah, get <laughs> Good that, 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 that never yeah. happens. That's like a one in a million thing that the puff is in range to get killed. But there you go. Right. We got we got to kill him. Here's another buffer set up. He's going to do a double jump here, and it sets up the room so that you don't have to kill that bat. The bat didn't get in the way anyway. Uh, uh, quite a bit of damage boosting in this level. There's another example of it. Uh, we don't do a lot of damage boosting this game because health comes at a premium, and we'll explain why uh, later on in the run. Um, right. But for now, health, having health isn't too bad. We're going to pick up a snowman doll that's going to allow us to kill the boss very quickly. Yeah. Um, and that snowman doll, as an example, is called a sub-item, and you don't see it on his screen there. But when he pauses, he'll have a second menu that he can go to, um, and you'll see it appropriately here. Which is also something you, you can buffer the inputs for to select. You'll, he'll, when he gets the chance to use that snowman doll, he's going to use it basically instantly. Uh, this is Octo the Huge. He's a big RNG boss, a big reset point of the run. Uh, not the best pattern, but he comes through okay, and Bug Doctor is going to clean him up pretty quickly here. Perfect. So one thing to highlight as far as this boss fight goes, and this is something we'll use throughout the run, 
is that when you press the B button to throw your yo-yo, as it's being thrown out, you can release and press B again to buffer the next throw of the yo-yo to come out on the exact, on um, the precise frame that your previous animation ends. So you're essentially buffering. You saw how quickly he was hitting that enemy with the yo-yo. All of those inputs are buffered, and the timing for that is extremely tight. Yeah, it's so, not a mash. It's not a, he's not mashing it no. as fast as possible. That is, it is precise timing. Um, there's yeah. lots of enemies that work that way in this game. Yeah, if, if you tried to mash there, that would go much, much slower, I, I, I assure you. So the fact that he was able to do that time, because here's the thing, if he's off on like a couple of those inputs, that Octo the Huge is gonna go back up to the top and you have to wait for a second cycle for, for it to come down and who knows when that's gonna be. So to do that all in one cycle, you have to be very confident with your inputs and Bug Doctor nailed it. So this is a good chance for donations uh, if you've got them. Yes. I think I can get you hooked up here. All right, let's start with Sven Craig coming in with $7.47. <laughs> the return of Star Tropics to GDQ. <laughs> the return of Star Tropics to GDQ means another donation from me. Always love seeing this game being shown some love. Hope you remembered the letter from your Uncle Steve. Well, uh, you just spoiled the game for everyone. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't warn me. <laughs> no, no, no. It's Not totally fine. Okay. We're, we're, we're messing with you. But, oh, uh, uh, so, yeah, that's that's a code we'll use later on. That's a very good reference, um, and, and we'll explain how that goes. Um, so we're going to go into Chapter 3. Chapter 3, the sub crashes. Our goal is just to fix the sub. Um, this is a very strange chapter uh, because it actually has five dungeons in it. Um, some of them are rather short like this one, some of them are rather long. Uh, but it, it is the beginner's trap of the run. This is really where people, uh, if you're trying to learn this run, uh, this chapter is where people, most people get stuck and lose the most time. Um, that was... Yeah, that was close. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, every room in this dungeon is, is completely RNG based. You just have to hope you get lucky. These are the winged monkeys. Uh, and... These are evil. Yeah, the, the only time you're going to see them in the game is these two rooms. Uh, they kind of just hop all over the place, and you just got to hope they hop in the general direction where you are, but not on you. Right. Because um, <laughs> they do one one heart of damage here. Uh, what? We got a bad roll there. So uh, the snake dropping down, he has about a 50% chance of doing that. Um, that's based on the frame spawn uh, that he comes in on, because there's four different frame spawns that the game loads the enemies in. Um, so he actually came in on the on the later ones, and that or the earlier ones. Sorry, he came in on the earlier ones, and that made him uh, see Mike before Mike could jump off to the block, and he you know lunged at him, which actually makes that room slower. Which is why this is the RNG dungeon. Um, right. but, but we made it through relatively unscathed here. Yeah, and and fortunately this dungeon is very short. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, Bug Doctor is now about to enter the second town of the game. This is called Miracola. He's going to have to do something very similar to what he did in the first town in Chapter 1, where he has to talk to a certain number of people and a certain order of people in... Or not, not necessarily a certain order of people, but uh, uh, certain people in... A certain number of people, excuse me, in order to have the guard for the the chief's hut step away so that he could talk to him, which is the kind of the, the plot trigger that advances. One of the people that he has to talk to here is this girl here. This is going to be another example. Not this one. The next one uh, is going to be another example of that Whoa. buffered input for a yes or no question. There you go. So um, we have to tell her that she's pretty. Otherwise, we can't beat the game. That's true. And actually, Bug Doctor did an intentional setup there uh, by talking to her from the left. Uh, what we don't want her to do uh, and if if, uh, if Mike's not looking good enough for a date with her today, then she likes to block the way, uh, as it turns out. So uh, she'll, she'll walk in, in the path, and you'll have to wait for her to move out of the way. Uh, the way NPCs work in this game is that uh, they have a 50% chance of walking in the direction they're already facing, and then a 50% chance of doing something else. So uh, you, you give yourself the best chance of avoiding her blocking your path by having her face to the left or face down so she doesn't walk in your direction now. That doesn't mean she won't do it, but um, she was very close to doing it, and that's why Bug Doctor talked to her from the left. Then she moves out of the way, so we're we're in good shape. So Mike, Mike yeah, wasn't having a bad hair day today. Yes, good. <laughs> 
And uh, I think it's a good time for a bug joke. I, I prepared some bug jokes since uh, Bug Doctor uh, is running here. So, uh, hey, Fani, uh, why are ants always so confused? I don't know, Tantalus, why? Because their uncles are always ants. <laughs> oh, I've got I've got more of that game, but don't you worry. Oh. Don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're gonna head into three, two, and uh, this this next level. Uh, this is actually, by the way, we did have to talk to everyone in that town. There's no people we can skip there. Uh, so three, two is a very technical and fast dungeon. I believe the, the bug dog is gonna jump the snakes here. We're gonna walk through. Okay, so this this is uh, the the bonehead room here, and Bug Doctor does a little bit of manipulation to get a perfect pattern set up there, so that we yeah. can jump across the water and kill the bonehead as he comes at us. Um, he did the the movement he did in the room and to start it up, set that up perfectly. So uh, this is the first, or actually the second example of a dark room. Um, the, what the game wants you to do, if you're probably sitting there thinking, how in the world am I supposed to figure out how to get through this? Uh, so the snakes charge you when they see you, and the only one that you can reach is the one you're supposed to be able to hit. Um, you, if, if that doesn't make sense, you'd have to actually play it there. Uh, as Bug Doctor sets up the baseball strat so that he can, he uses a baseball bat and then buffers his jumps across the tiles so that he perfectly can pick up those hearts and make it across the tile, and it looks like the tile was gone. Uh, but he made it just in time. All right, and I have to point out a very, very slight piece of tech there, or a very um, detailed piece of tech that did there, um, which we call the switchback on the second set of stairs there, where he turned around and faced to the right on the frame that he entered the stairs, um, which saves, I believe, four frames. It's a so... two-frame trick that saves four frames, yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm glad he nailed that. He's got another opportunity to do another one later in this chapter where he's moving down and then he has to turn to face up, I believe. Mm -hmm. The window for that is only one frame. Um, so, so no pressure to, to nail that one, too, but... There, four there's... frames, actually. Yeah, there, there's a way you can do it with a jump buffer that gives you a little bit more leniency, but... Um... Yeah, I don't think we've we spent a lot of time. So this is Magma the Fierce. Uh, we're going to do a baseball bat on the on the plane tile there so that it sets up the fireball straps perfectly. It lets us jump over all the fireballs, jump on the blocks that we want at the right time so that we never get hit by these fireballs. And the only one we're going to get hit one with is right here. Boink. And there we go. Uh, that's Magma the Fierce, the only the fire boss in the fire dungeon surrounded in the only room in the fire dungeon that has water in it. Yeah. So you notice here, we're, we're two for two on fighting bosses, and we have yet to, like, directly hit either of them. <laughs> well, we, there's Octo. We, we, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Two two bosses out of three, yes. Yes. That we're, we have not... Oh, oh bug. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've cleared that one. We're gonna do our first semi-sequence break. Uh, I know we talked about that there aren't any sequence breaks. Um, this is a good time to kind of talk about how that works. A lot of the times in Star Tropics, um, like for instance in the chapter two, we had to talk to that lady before the bottle showed up. Um, it, it, there's a lot of cases where you might know the answer to a puzzle, um, but you can't proceed because you haven't talked to the NPCs because the game doesn't know you know the answer to the puzzle. So the game forces you to do that. It does not do that to you here. There's a castle that we're going to enter in a little bit the, that they'll tell you they want you to retrieve the crystal ball that's in the ghost village. And so we're just going to go right to the ghost village instead because it's not required to hit that check first. And this this is, this is uh, a run killer. This is probably the... I don't know if you'd say it's the hardest dungeon in the game, but it, it, it would be for most people upon first glance, uh, yeah. whether it be casual or, or speed running. Um, both I, of I was, both things are rough. I was about to say, in a casual playthrough, this is a noticeable difficulty spike in in your dungeon adventures so far. And, and actually, you saw there's a, a, a path up there that Bug Doctor didn't take. That's actually a dungeon false exit. Um, yeah. There's, about, I think, five of them um, that you could end up getting stuck into, um, and uh, they they don't refill your hearts or your lives. So if yeah. you if you so, exit the dungeon, you're stuck with it. Okay. So this next room, you're going to see some goofy movement here, and we'll explain it when it's done. 
this little stutter on the wall does a jump in place. So what's going on here is uh, there's there's a bunch of ghosts that you can't see. There's a treasure chest in the last room uh, that would have given you a wand that could see them, but we don't have time to pick that up. So what we're gonna do is just walk around them, knowing where they are and building you know building a buffered strat that sets that up. He's also gonna jump over the ghost here. Yeah. So just like we were talking about the sinking blocks before, about how they're movement or their, their pattern is fixed when you enter the room. So is the movement of those ghosts that he was dodging in that room. So as long as he does those buffered inputs in the exact same order and the exact same timing, he will always avoid taking damage there. And he did. And uh, we've had a lot of sinking blocks and we've had a lot of dark rooms. Now we're going to combine them together. Um, oh yeah. And this room could be daunting uh, for most people. What you're supposed to do is go down and get a light item that would let you see the room for a short period of time. But as, as we, this is a speed run, we don't have time for that. So we're going to do it in the dark. Uh, there's two sinking blocks on the right side in this corridor right here. There's one and two. We're, yeah. We set it up perfectly and Bug Doctor just nailed it as always. Yeah, you could probably hear the um, the the, 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 no, the noise that they make when they sink and then come back up. Um, but uh, I love that room because you have the boss music and then you just jump out of there and everything's fine again. Yeah, it's, and, and actually, uh, I've seen so many people get stuck in casual playthroughs, like, where am I supposed to go from here? Um, right. uh, it took me forever as a young child to figure out that you had to jump up to get through there. Um, but the, again, this, this dungeon is built to play trickery on your mind. Uh, as Black Dodger moves through, look, looking very good on health, and health management is actually also very important to the run in this specific dungeon. Yeah. Um, because we're going to need health, and we'll explain why that is in a minute. Um, so this is our first chance to actually see the ghosts that we've been avoiding right. um, thus far, and uh, we're going to. They're real, I swear. They're real. <laughs> they're called min they're called minis, by the way. Yeah. So. Uh, good pattern there from from the uh, the dead dogs. Ooh, uh, very can... very nice dim hag room. Yeah, indeed. All right, now this room is not so nice. So he needs to kill four out of the six mummies in order to proceed. But there's a specific four that he needs to kill. The ones he doesn't are the two that are on the bottom of the screen, and he moved perfectly to manipulate them to not to have those other two mummies not. Um, approach him or stack up. If if two mummies kind of get one on top of each other, it's real bad news. And this is the room before the boss here. He's going to go for the dim hags first. This is a little bit of a safer strat. If, if you're going for like super fast times, you probably want to try and multitask and kill both at the same time. But well, the skull's being a little bit of a, a jerk. Skull's there. messing with me. Um, and now we're going to encounter the boss Maxi. We're going to buffer a shot so that it connects when we reveal him. Uh, and there's Maxi. Okay, and once he gets down to three health, he's going to freeze. Looks like we're not going to get that far. Yep. Wow. We're going to kill him before he even goes into his uh, rage mode. So there we go. Uh, that's 3-3, three, three, and Buck Doctor went through there uh, with no damage, I believe. Yeah, this is smooth, uh, smooth Ghost Village. Very, very, yeah, very much so. And and smooth is not the norm, even for seasoned speedrunners of this game. So yes, uh, to this, do that in this setting is nice. This dungeon is is a is a run killer. Uh, so this is a good chance for donations if you got them. Indeed. Well, now I feel like I need to make up from last time. So uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start big with a donation from Toadmeister for one thousand dollars. Ooh, let's go! Yo. Let's go! I used to rent Star Tropics from my local Blockbuster and always got stuck on the part where you had to dip the note in the water for a password since the rental copy didn't come with any docs. <laughs> Eventually found the code and was able to beat this excellent game. So that's actually, uh, we have that in our notes here to discuss. That's actually a pretty popular refrain for people that were, were playing this uh, growing up, getting it from their rental store, that it was... It was a sticking point, um, and for those who don't know what we're talking about, it's something coming up in Chapter 4 that we will discuss when we get there. But right now, what we're doing is we're entering the Kingdom of Shikola. The inhabitants of this place um, are all women, and they do not permit anyone besides women into 
in, into the kingdom. But we loop around here and we talk to this fortune teller. This is why we wanted to get the crystal ball. The fortune teller is very happy with this and she's going to concoct a disguise for us to turn Michael into quote unquote Michelle. And this will allow uh, this will allow him to enter uh, this kingdom and to obviously to progress the game. And we, we need that we they they hold the key to the, the to the dungeon. This is another example of you might know the answer to the puzzle, but you can't solve it until you proceed. So um, we're gonna talk to the queen. Um, she's she happened to hear that you took out all the ghosts. Um, and she's going to give us our, our first default weapon upgrade, uh, which is called the Shooting Star, and this is why the health was important. Um, you can only use the Shooting Star when you have six health. Uh, we only have six health maximum, so we need to stay at full health for the rest of the um, chapter to, to complete it optimally. Um, the, of course, the, she tells us that to get the magic phrase, uh, we have to talk to the, the head warrior. So she's going to tell us the mag magic phrase, um, which we're, we will say together uh, in just a few moments. Yes. <laughs> um, now, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. But, uh, well, no, you're good. You're good. Go for it. So in the passage in between here and the graveyard, there was, you saw a staircase to the right. In there is a heart container that you can pick up, but that takes probably about like 15 seconds or so. That's typically not picked up during the run unless like maybe you just need it for extreme safety. Yeah, it's a, it's a safety strap for new runners for sure. Um, yes. But, all right. So ready? Wow. We're gonna we're gonna say the magic words on ten. And, uh, I guess on our ten since both dodgers can see it first. Nine, ten. Abracadabra. <laughs> That is that was, uh, I, Mickey, I, Mickey Dadrad. I swear uh, that's what the head warrior really said. I promise. That's ex that's yeah, the exact absolutely. magic phrase. The the door wouldn't have opened if we didn't say it. Right. Oh, I thought that octot was cool enough. Oh, I thought Ooh, so too. Yeah. So actually, uh, those octots and the skulls operate in the same manner. Um, if they're facing left, they can go down or left. If they're facing right, they can go right or up. So that's actually why Bug Doctor hesitated there. We could, you can, they can do one or the other. We can't tell which one they're gonna do. So uh, it's only a 50-50. But uh, that room is pretty cool because the yeah. the enemies you have to kill there spawn on specific tiles that that Mike walks on to trigger them. Um, so Bug Doctor walks in the tiles a certain way to set up the optimal uh, killing pattern of the Moto Fish there, and then the Octots you just have to react to. Alrighty, so this is now our fifth and final dungeon of this chapter. Uh, this is easily the longest chapter time-wise in the game. It's got five dungeons in total, as well as a couple of towns that you need to, to go through, so... Um, five is probably fairly close, but but this one for sure. Uh, but again, so just to reiterate, when it comes to the, the shooting star, if you drop below six current health, you will revert back to the yo-yo, which is going to not only increase your range that you see him kind of shooting out that little, you know, that little star, but it also is going to cut your damage in half. Now, if you get back to six or more health, you will regain the shooting star, so... Health management is extremely important, especially coming up in this next section here, where we're going to deal with some very undesirable enemies, right? Yes, Tantalus? these these are these are the frappas, or otherwise known as the frog kappas, and they are a pain in the butt. They will they will jump up wherever they want, and they will get in your way, and they're going to try and get Bug Doctor's way here, but he's not going to let them. Uh, yeah. you, you, Good patience. You react to their pattern wrong, and you lose your shooting star. It, 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 it can be pretty devastating, and they can run you over very quickly. So yeah. um, there are hearts in that clock room if you need them. Um, but uh, another example of killing extra enemies for a point drop there. So we didn't need to kill that skull, but we just we get them for the point drop. Um, we're going to do some manipulation, and we've got really good setup there. That's the second one. Nice. So there's there's multiple, there's more than two frog kappas that can spawn in that room. But... Uh, Bug Doctor manipulate it so we get the right ones. And then the Goglin, uh, we only have to kill one of those three Goglins. He set it up perfectly and got good patterns. And we're going into the final section of this dungeon. Yeah. Yeah, so, and uh, it's something that has happened before uh, throughout the run. 
is that there's going to be rooms where you will need to kill all of the enemies in order to open the door or blow open the wall. And then there's rooms where you only need to kill certain enemies. Those enemies that you, specific ones that you need to kill are always going to appear in the exact same place in each room. So it's not like, you know, if you need to kill two out of the five bats, you have to guess which two. No, you'll always know exactly which ones you need to kill. Yep. And uh, so the reason we're, we're in this dungeon at all is because the re the whole thing that set, it off, set us off on our journey was we, the village of Miracola, the chief's daughter, is sick, and he needed the scroll from the mountain hermit. So uh, we're, we're about to get the scroll from the mountain hermit to save his daughter, um, and that's the basically the story so far. He promised to fix our sub if we can... Um, get the scroll and and bring his daughter back back uh out of a coma i guess so uh yeah this is probably yep. a really good time to st we have a long time before another dungeon it's probably a great time if you have donations in a row you want to go through them this before really we start time. with donations actually i just want to say there's a slight photosensitivity warning coming up oh true oh, yeah, yeah yes, we, good call good call spell so just so you know <laughs> All right, uh, I've got a few of them. I'll try and run through real quick here. Cool. Let's start with a right $10 here. donation from Sven Stormbeard. Let's go, Bug Doctor. Let's go, Star Tropic. Thanks, Sven. Much appreciated. I've got $25 from Chibuka. Good morning, Bug Doctor. Good morning, Chibuka. I've got a 20 I've got a $25 donation from Sebi. Star Tropics was one of my first games played ever and still brings me lots of nostalgia. I just hope you kept the map from the box, otherwise you'll have a hard time beating the game. Lots of love from Sweden Cola. <laughs> you know, one thing that I'm noticing here looking at chat, and obviously you have noticed here is that every time you finish a dungeon, uh, as soon as you come out, there's a text box that comes up that says, Wow, you've done it. Um, <laughs> it's almost like the game is incredulous that you were actually able to progress because it's so hard. I feel like if we were in a live setting here, that every time you popped out of a dungeon, we would hear the audience in the stream room shouting, Wow, you've done it. And I would I would love to be able to hear that. Well, we thank you all for, for shouting in the chat. And uh, yes. I, I see I see our good friends, Zero Counts, in the chat noticed uh, how fast this is going. It's, this run is on an excellent pace. Uh, Bug Doctor yeah. is doing an, doing an excellent job. So... Uh -uh. Uh, so this is this is chapter four. Uh, I'm just gonna touch on the story here very slightly. Uh, this is the guy we saw in chapter one. Uh, he happened to get swallowed by a whale, as did we. And uh, well, a as it turns out, he had a lighter, uh, and we're gonna use that to set his raft on fire so the whale sneezes out. Listen, it all makes sense. I promise. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is just a roadblock in in our in our path there's no dungeon here uh which is honestly a shame this would be probably a really cool environment um to have a have a dungeon in um especially after playing uh uh kingdom hearts one they have a, they have a dungeon in monstro but um <laughs> the, the, yeah this is uh we're just gonna find the lighter it's always in a preset path so uh if you've got any more donations it's a it's a great time for it all right Let's do a $100 donation from Mickey Dad Rad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mickey. Hey, Bug. Mickey Dad Rad here. This is the real run, so it is time to ignore all my usual advice. No Mickey dipping, no second worm, and for goodness sake, don't tell Miss Mira the truth. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck. Go fast and show the world that the only good bug is a bug doctor. <laughs> Thanks, Mickey. Uh, Got time for one more? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's get this in real quick. And a, an anonymous donation here for $1,800. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Star Tropics on the NES is one of my favorite games ever. Thrilled to see it run at GDQ again. Good luck. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so with the lighter retrieved, we will now uh, talk to... Uh, so so this boy here that we're talking to is um, Dr. Jones's assistant, and, and or Steve's assistant, and that is 
uh, Mike's uncle. So what he's telling us is that uh, there's some weird stuff going on. And in fact, we're going to kind of get that. We're going to get that story here once he gets spit out on the island. He's going to say, all right, there's evil alien things going on. It's wacky. You got to go figure it out. Leave me here on this deserted island. I'll be fine. Um, and now comes the real boss of the game. Yes. Yes, and fortunately, we got the code from the chat. So thank you all, chat, for giving us the code. We probably would have got stuck here for a while if we didn't have it. Um, <laughs> what, what you're supposed to do... That, that I'm was ready to go through all the possibilities, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was the spoiler, Mr. Game and Shout, by the way. It, it, it wasn't a real spoiler, but um, yeah. but yes. So that's what people talk about when they say they got stuck as a, you know, if they played it as a kid um, for renting it from the store uh, because the game comes with a letter, a physical letter that's on paper. It's on special paper because you're supposed to dip the letter in water and it works. I have the letter. Uh, uh, the letter resists water pretty good. It dries off easily um, and can be re-dipped, so... It's a, it's now it's a collector's item, I guess, but, um, but the letter reveals the, the megahertz code that you need to, uh, and basically what the, the code is for is to have the sub chime in on Dr. J's location. So, um, that's how we get our guidance for the rest of the game. Um, and what we've come to here, uh, is chapter five, which is the straits blocked. Um, uh, we, we, you know, we followed Dr. J's coordinates. We're stuck here because we can't get around this boat that's in the way. So this is another semi-sequence break. Uh, we're going to talk to the fisherman to grab a worm. The fisherman will always give us a worm, um, whenever we need it. But, um, we wouldn't have known we need a worm unless we knew we need a worm. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> we're going to go to the, uh, village and talk to the chief of Belcola and he'll tell us what to do next, Vani. Yes, he will. And again, this is another one of the villages where we're going to talk to. We don't have to talk to everyone. We can skip a couple of people before we can get into the hut. And again, Bug is going to take the optimal. Oh, shoot. So that guy there in the green tank top can step to the left and save you a couple steps, but he wasn't a bro this time. Oh, well. Bad. Um, bad yeah, yeah, bad, <laughs> bad green tank top. Very guy. bad villager. Yes. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> so... Um, so he's going to come through here, and then when we talk to the chief, he's going to tell us about the legend of Captain Bell, who left his ship there to block the strait to uh, protect the villagers from an attack. But unfortunately, it's, it's positioned in such a way that we can't proceed with what we need to do. So what he is going to tell us is that we need to go into um, Captain Bell's, I guess, kind of sanctuary to uh, to be able to get to where we can open the way for us to get through. But before we can do that, we need to talk to Petey the Parrot, who apparently really, really likes worms. How convenient. He is going to give us a quote-unquote kind of like uh, password here. It's something called solfege, which is, uh, you know, if you're familiar with that song from The Sound of Music, the Do, Re, Mi, uh, what he says is uh, Do, Mi, So, Far, Do, Mi, which is uh, C, E, G, F, C, E, uh, corresponding to like the keys on a piano, which you're going to be seeing here in a few seconds that we're going to need to step on in order to solve the puzzle to, to get the opening into the dungeon, the, the one and only dungeon here in Chapter 5. Yep, and and uh, we're going to play the piano keys in a second in a certain order. Um, you key, While you could access the piano keys at any time, if you hadn't talked to the parrot, you can't. the keys won't register and the game won't let you proceed. So yeah. um, this is a good chance uh, while we have a quick second here um, to talk about Star Tropics. This game was never released in Japan. Right. Um, so this is the optimal version. A lot of people are like, why are you playing the, the USA version? Because there is no Japanese version. This game was never released in Japan. Uh, in fact, some Japanese players have experienced it the first time playing it on the Nintendo Switch Online uh, via USA. So uh, that, that's why this game is played in English. Uh, the, the PAL version is also in English only. Um, and Star Tropics 2 was not released in PAL. I don't think it was only in North America. So... Um, as Bug Doctor hits the piano keys there, we're going to move away. Uh, uh, get our Fs in the chat ready, because this Chapter is Chapter 5, room. boss defeated. Yep, the F yes. room. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, it's shaped, shaped perfectly like an F. Um, yeah. and, and we'll go right into Chapter 5 here. Yeah, so this, this dungeon here is going to be notable for its kind of like tricks and traps and whatnot. 
Yeah, and, yeah. Um, Mike's yeah. actually uh, his last name is Jones. Uh, he's actually a distant cousin of Indiana. Uh, you might know him. Uh, and this is uh, this is our version of the Temple of Doom here. As you as you, as so, you watch the blocks disappear behind you. <laughs> yeah. So um, this we are going to exploit a lot of those those buffered movements that you've seen in the run so far. Uh, Bug is going to use quite a, like you saw one right there. You see that, that very slight where he twitched upward and, um, and then kept moving. Uh, that was a, that was a very tight little buffer to make sure that he didn't get hit by one of those arrows that come flying out of the wall without any warning. And, and those and arrows come out what on when you step on certain tiles. Correct. And we're gonna come. I'm gonna. We're gonna do a, a quick quiet section on the on the what what I call the bowling balls. I think they're actually called megatons for, for yes. the game game's purposes. But um, we're gonna give Bug Doctor some quiet to get through the section uh, in just a moment. Um, another yeah. block blow up room, and then we'll encounter our first of three megaton rooms. These are instant contact death if we touch them. So. Uh, that's why we're going to be like to change the focus. Absolutely. And that deserves some applause in the chat. If yeah. this were in the room, we would do a big clap if we were in the room here, uh, <laughs> get, getting through there like that. Uh, so Bug Doctor did uh, a perfect setup strat to start the room so that he could hit that bowling ball. We used to just walk through there and that was very safe, but it wasn't as fast as it could be. So we did a, a, a strat to set up the shot so that it always connects with that uh, bowling ball. And, um, and it just saves us about 1.2 seconds over the previous method. Yeah, and, and something that I do want to point out here is that I know this isn't a marathon setting and it's obviously an extremely large marathon, but Doctor is using virtually no safety strats. He is going for it right now, and I I respect, I really respect that. We're going to do another setup strat here to optimize going through um, as he comes through and makes it. Looks like he was going to touch that bowling ball, but he didn't. It would have been instant I'm scared contact death. Every time. I'm scared I get scared, scared every time, time too, man. I'm Trust right there the with setups. you. Yeah, you got to trust the frames. You trust the frames, yeah. but uh, I should mention that taking a death in this section is basically a game over on this dungeon. Uh, it, it would be like a two or three minute loss if Bug Doctor died to either of those two bowling balls. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, like like Vani said, it's it's there's no safety strats. Uh, there's a few things we're going to do that make it a little bit easier, but they're still incredibly optimized and cost very little time to execute on. Uh, as Bug Doctor heads into the the room before the third megaton. Uh, we're going to do a little buffer strat there so that he, none of those spears hit him as he walks through, and he also times his jump on the sinking block and the third megaton. Quietness. And we're through, and we're through. Brilliant. I know that's been a, a trouble point <laughs> from time to time for Bug Doctor, so I wanted to make sure you had room to focus there. Bad pirates. Oh, yeah. Pirates not being super nice. So where they choose to appear in the room, and, and, and to an extent their timing as well, is very random. So um, the timing of when they appear, I mean. So uh, sometimes you can have a few seconds wasted in there if the pirates just don't. Uh, um, don't show up exactly where you want them to. And they're they're just a reskin dim hags. There's actually two different sets of mirrors, both in both in the yeah. rooms with the megatons, the blue and the red. Uh, it's a little bit faster to pick up the one in the blue. As we uh, yeah. have our tribute to Captain Bell here, don't worry, sinking his ship is going to let us go over top of it. We couldn't have submerged yeah. under it before. Don't worry. And let us uh, let us see your lowercase o sevens in chat as we salute Captain Bell as we hear. My country, tis of thee, slash God save the queen, depending on your, you know, your region. I like to joke about the red bowling ball being stained with, uh, Bug Doctor blood. Because, <laughs> uh, I have a nasty tendency to input, uh, do an input error in that room when I'm under pressure, but uh, <laughs> luckily well, you... that did not happen <laughs> this time. 
Well, uh, it's probably squished a lot of bugs, uh, and, and I've got yeah, another, I mean, I've got another bu bug doc doctor joke. Uh, bug, oh no. bug doctor. There are many kinds of bees, but which bee is the best for your health? You're a bug doctor. You would know, right? Uh, what bee is best for my health? Vitamin B. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is a, a, we really need to mention this now. We did oh, have yeah. a donation incentive here for, um, for Bug Doctor to pick up the Big Apple, which is in here. So to explain chapter six real quick, the overworld is this gigantic submarine maze that you're supposed to go through. Um, and part of it, there's lots of, of dead ends and, you know, different people you can talk to and all kinds of stuff like that. But we had a donation incentive here for, for Bug Doctor to pick up the Big Apple. So that's what this detour is right here. 34 second detour to pick up yep. the most unique item in the game, the Big Apple. It's delicious, but nothing happens. Nothing happens. What kind of so, apple was it? <laughs> Well, I'm hoping ambrosia, because that's my favorite yeah. kind of apple right now. That's what it was, so, then. <laughs> so, big, big shout out to all of you there who donated so that my friend Bog Doctor could get trolled by a piece of fruit. <laughs> hey, that apple might give me give Mike the energy to uh, pull off a miracle or something like that later on. Yeah, yeah, it does quote unquote nothing. <laughs> its real power is a mystery. Satiates hunger. There you go. <laughs> uh, this is another good time for donations uh, before we get into uh, uh, our our first uh, dungeon here. All right, let's do a five dollar donation from Derek. You've got this, Doc. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. <laughs> I've also got fifty dollars here from Zero Counts. Hey, Bug. Best of luck on the run today. I'm so excited to see Star Tropics at another GDQ. I'll donate another $25 if you manage to sneak past Jeff the Alien in Chapter 7 without getting hit. Oh, Jeff. I don't okay, know if we were possible. We were going to talk about Jeff, so... Uh, all right, like, so... I didn't realize... Blindfolded. Yeah, oh, did, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The blindfolded yeah, yeah, dungeon. Oh, so Yeah, I, serious I time here for this dungeon. Didn't realize really Bug tough. Doctor was, was no cam here, but... Uh, if he, I promise, he's doing this blindfolded. Don't worry. Uh, this is frame this, he's gonna, as well. He's gonna frame perfect blindfold dungeon, and we're through. Done. Okay. Oh, Let's get man. a clap for That's that. Tough. <laughs> nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. The tech is amazing there. <laughs> so uh, real quick, that last overworld section, the navcom kind of prompts you uh, when you're close to Doctor J. So we, Bug Doctor walked around certain points of the overworld so that he wouldn't uh, encounter navcom's prompts as much. So. Um, just a minor detail I wanted to point out there for the overworld as we go into uh, chapter six here. You may notice, uh, this is a good time to point this out. You always start every chapter with three hearts in this game, um, which is probably infuriating for, for most people. Um, it means you always start with the yo-yo um, when, you, when you play a dungeon. Um, and you always have to recover your health. Usually the game does give you an option to do that um, pretty early on in each dungeon. Uh, as we go in the long room here, Buck Doctor is going to actually do a manipulation. Um, he's going to look like he made a mistake, but he didn't, I promise. He's taking this damage on purpose, and then he's going to uh, set up... It basically sets up a kill. So the Shooting Star has a stretch range, uh, and there's one of the Octots on the top right that uh, basically... Uh, can sometimes uh, not get shot. So we set up a damage frame. Uh, by taking damage, we know what frame of damage we're on so that we can always connect that shot. As Bug Doctor clears the mummy ring room, no problem. Uh, that's one of our safety strats uh, by grabbing the potion. We we'll ne might need it for this boss coming up. Yeah, and it, it only wastes like two or three seconds. Yeah, it's actually less than three. Mm -hmm. And beautiful tur boss. This is the tur boss. Um, Perfect. I, and uh, we nail it. We even got it so that we can get the anklet while he's dying. That orange item is called the anklet. It lets you double jump uh, over two squares instead of one square um, for that room that you're in. Um, so uh, you want to pick that up while the boss is dying because uh, the door's stuck closed at that point. So, oh, Ooh, weird pattern. Good Weird pattern there. Um, and then we get to enter uh, a pretty cool section of chapter 6 1 here. Um, super tight execution coming up that you're going to get to see. 
And you can see one of the coolest items in the game, which is the cleats. So you may notice uh, there's going to be a lot of items themed after baseball. We had the baseball bats, um, you know, or everyday items, I guess I should say. Uh, we're going to get the base, the horse hide here. It's called the horse hide in the manual um, because reasons. And we're going to get the cleats and we're going to kill everybody in the room. So the game teaches you how to use them. And we're going to do a specific setup on this enemy right here. No, you could oh. kill the enemy faster. Oh, shoot. I uh, didn't... Uh, fireball didn't... cannon. Yeah. Uh, and what we were hoping was that fireball cannon would shoot diagonally up, not straight up. Uh, it slows this room down a little bit, so we're going to have to go to a backup strat here. Not a big deal. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Not worth... Yeah, just just go. <laughs> yeah, we'll just use the shoes here. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about an oh, optimization, you know, okay. just kind of a, oh, oh that's fine. You still have a medicine, uh, don't forget that, before you end the dungeon. Yeah, that you too. Sometimes that long room just goes wrong, so then you, I guess you call it the wrong room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to get the, the, the boss. His name is really Broken Joe. That's the actual name of this boss. And yeah. Broken Joe, uh, again, is another instant contact death boss. Um... There's there's a sneaky way you can get above him, but it's, it's it doesn't do you any good. Um, and one cycle, one cycle, Joe. <laughs> Perfect. He, that is RNG. He can do a couple different action items there. He can shoot four shots, three shots, uh, three shots and freeze. You want three shots and freeze, um, and that gives you the opportunity to kill him in one shot. And we get him in one cycle. So. Um, very, very, very impressive there, um, and perfect yeah. execution, and good job using the medicine to get the health back. We actually do want yeah, to Yeah, me as well. Pretty quick. Yeah, I, I, I do want to highlight that. I mean, if you are given that opportunity by Broken Joe, who is probably my least favorite boss in this game, the execution required to do that in one cycle is extremely tight, and Buck Doctor made it look super easy, as he is with a lot of other things in this game, so... Um, yeah, the amount of the amount of skill and execution that you're seeing on display here, especially if you're not familiar with the game, let alone the speed run, is um, is extremely high. Just this is my uh, my bug doctor appreciation, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, speech. Thank shout you, out, you. shout out to the uh, bug doctor, Broken Joe Rips in the in the chat there. Uh, yeah, very, very well done. <laughs> Saw that. Uh, so th this dungeon has a false entrance. Um, so they. It's the first dungeon in the game that does this, the only dungeon uh, that does it where you, ha you have to actually go through the wall um, and and to complete the dungeon. It's kind of weird. Uh, but again, this game just likes to toy with you. Uh, that's just another example of it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do a quick little setup here. Um, just perfect execution rooms. There's, there's nothing um, too crazy about This is actually the one thing about this dungeon that is interesting um, is that you actually want to refrain from. Ooh, killing enemies where possible uh, because there are certain enemies that instead of lowering your point score they raise it uh, in this dungeon and I don't know exactly which ones do or don't um, you also have a lot of rooms that killing enemies will open a door to reveal another room and we don't want to do that either so uh, we're coming up on the uh, clay doll boss here yeah so uh, Bonnie you had a good comment about this the other day so I'm gonna let you handle this and the comment is cool people don't look at explosions so what what is um what is going on there is that bug doctor knows the precise number of hits that he needs to do on that boss and then as soon as he has already input the last b press to do that hit he's buffering up so that he can walk away as soon as possible normally you know because that's another boss where contact with it is uh is instant death in and the speed run, normally, it is. Yeah, Actually, it's 11 yeah. hearts normally. Okay, well, yeah. For all <laughs> intents and purposes, how about that? Um, so, um, normally, you just sit there and just wail away at him until you see him explode, and then you can exhale. But Bug is way too cool for that. So, um, he just does what he needs to do, and just it's just business as usual for Bug Doctor. Was that the, the asterisk on the bats new? I've never seen you do that before. <laughs> It's just for fun. <laughs> yeah, we're having fun here. Yeah, all right. So uh, now we get to fight two of them at once, uh, the, the Clay Doll bosses. Uh, and Bug Doctor's got a very, very dangerous attack. Again, he dies if he touches these guys, so pay attention here. Tia. 
And clap. Oh. That, that's a clap God. moment. That's very, very good. Uh, Man, that, I was I was holding my breath, and I wasn't even the one speed running. <laughs> so they are a little bit less dangerous than they look. Uh, contact damage is a, is a death here, but um, they do shoot you first before they walk into you. So if, if you didn't think you got the timing right, you could just stay in the pocket, so to speak, and um, take take a damage boost from a shot and walk through them. Um, so there, there is a little bit of safety there uh, that you take. Um, but yeah, we're through chapter six for the most part. We've got one little overworld piece yeah. left. Uh, good chance for yeah. donations if you've got them. I have plenty. Let's start with a $15 donation from McKK352. Go Bug! So happy you get to finally get to play this at AGDQ. I know you've been wanting to showcase this for a while. Remember, under the Southern Cross, anything is possible. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I've also got another donation here, $30 from Mickey Dad Rad. Abracadad Radicola here, $10 for each of you nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll cover the story really quick, and we can do another donation or two. So this, we finally found our uncle, Uncle Steve, Dr. Jones. Uh, he's going to tell us that, oh, by the way, aliens, uh, and, uh, well, you got to go get these cubes back that were in this rock, and uh, uh, leave me here. I'll be fine, but you go kill them. So that that's the story. Thanks, Uncle. Good for a couple more? Yep. Yep. Let's do Zarek's donation of $25. Delighted to see Star Tropics back at GDQ and all the growth of the Star Tropics speedrunning community this year. Amazing to see Sp Bug Doctor's skill and commitment to the speedrun. Run, run, hurry, hurry. And thank, you. Uh, thank you, Zarek. Uh, Zarek, a long-standing member of the Star Tropics team. We, we have seen a pretty large growth of the scene this year, uh, went from 32 to 52 runners. So um, thank you all for watching, participating. It's a very good scene to get into, very welcoming, um, and we're very helpful. As we go into uh, uh, one of the craziest dungeons in the game. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, that's only one and a half. That's not worse. Yeah, we'll try it. Yeah. We'll try. All right. So, so real quick, what's coming up is a section we refer to as the bottleneck. Um, it is extremely problematic. There is a very good chance here that Bug could die. We are definitely going to go quiet so we can focus on it. It's right here in this room. Not looking good. All right, we're going to give it okay. our best shot. Yep. I have to double shot these mock riders to get through. Um, oh my! Oh my goodness! Okay. Okay. Well, but the, this is gonna be <laughs> tough. Beat, beating the boss with a half heart is gonna be ridiculous. If he does this, somebody should donate a thousand dollars. Seriously. You absolutely You animal. mad me. Let's clap you for that one. Let's clap for that one. Oh. That is insane. To take those, take no damage on that after getting through the, the mock riders with a yo-yo. That is incredible. That is in, in tremendously difficult to do if you don't have the shooting star uh, or the ray gun. So. I actually, but, how do you even get enough health in 7-2 now? I don't even know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna, I don't know. I'll just... <laughs> You just <laughs> jump off in again. the first room? I don't uh, know. I'll just grab the hearts. Uh, yeah. We'll be okay. All right. Le as long legit, as legit, is quest nice. legit question for you, Bug Doctor. How do you feel right now after having just done that on AGDQ's stage? Well, at first I was extremely frightened as soon as that yellow alien decided to shoot me mm -hmm. uh, right in the back, which is very brave of him, of course. <laughs> Uh, it's like a one in 100 just, chance happening, by the way. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah that rarely already happens. But uh, I feel good now. All bad. Um, <laughs> well, he's the yeah, best in the was... world for a reason, folks. Yeah, that, that, cool. that's, there's no question. No question. Yeah, we, now so, we've got the capital while you've done it it's in the chat. <laughs> yeah. So and, and what happened? Okay. So what happened in the meantime was he picked up uh, another weapon up uh, upgrade 
um, called the Supernova. With this one, you need at least 11 heart, and you see it right here. Um, it's now this white weapon that does even more damage, and its shots go all the way across the screen. Oh, good This Jeff. is Jeff. Jeff? 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 Yo, you Jeff? Made it. He did it. Oh, good. All right, <laughs> he we made did it. Shoot me. That's Jeff. He, he, That's that Jeff close. the robot, and uh, he was a good Jeff today. Good Jeff. Yeah. Okay, okay. Good. Back up to... Our health is good now. Beautiful. All right, we're in great shape. So uh, I take this chance to point out that the the rows of hearts are in are in a oh nice, very nice. Yo, uh, that that's like a very I don't know the percent chance, but it's very low that you get all four to line up like that. Um, so there's actually eleven hearts in the row, not ten. You might by default just assume there's ten like Zelda, but uh, there's actually eleven hearts in the row, and you need eleven hearts to have the supernova. Um, yeah. Again, it it has the range of the whole screen, and it uh, is double the power of the, of the shooting star. So you want it wherever possible. We're going to use it in this room. Uh, what Bug Doctor just picked up is um, the Vitamin X. Uh, the Vitamin X overfills your health to maximum and then slowly depletes it back down unless you take damage on your own. So uh, we, we always grab it as a safety strat there. It's, um, there are very few runs where you're not going to pick that up as we go into the uh, gold fat bot here. He's going to do a setup here with a jump so that he gets the double shot at the right time. And there Perfect. it is. Perfectly executed. Uh, and now we're going to talk about uh, Mike Jones's ability to walk on things. So in Star Tropics 2, oh. there, there are some glitches that uh, let Mike walk on water, um, he, he channeling his inner Jesus. Uh, we like to channel his in, inner Satan in Star Tropics uh, 1 by walking on fire, as Bug Doctor will demonstrate right here. And there we go. No problem. Okay. <laughs> and now, uh, Asteroid. This is... All right, so Asteroid, you, he dies from getting thrown into the pit here. So what Bug Doctor did was he damaged him exactly enough damage to force him to move back. There's a certain damage threshold that forces Asteroid to back up on you. Um, and when he backs up, uh, we do another set of damage, uh, exact damage inputs to get him to back up again. <laughs> and it gives us the exact amount of time to get back there, hit that switch, and drop him before he can lunge back forward. Because if you don't hit him enough, he'll lunge back forward and, and damage you. Um, again, another instant contact death boss, so um, getting up close and personal with it. Um, so this is a good chance for donations. All right, I got a few here ready for you. Pico de Moose sends in $15, was just waiting for the right moment to donate. For me, it was B puns over a game I never beat as a kid getting crushed. Keep it up. Also, ask and ye shall receive. Luna Meyer sends in $1,000. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, let's go. With Thank the comment, you. half a heart. Oh, no. <laughs> that was incredible. That. that was incredible. <laughs> Yeah, that and, you know, uh, to uh, that, you know, we're gonna pun here, but even though we had half a heart, my it, it was heart stopping. Yes. Um, watching that, I, I was, I was convinced you were gonna die. But if there is anybody on this planet that would be able to pull that off, especially in this setting, it is Bug Doctor. I thought I was toast. Yeah, we all did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. All right, so it's time for my for my last <laughs> bug joke, Bug Doctor. <clears throat> okay. So what what of my jokes is the worst kind of bug joke? Oh no, uh, I don't know. What is the worst kind of bug joke? The fly jokes because they never land. Oh, true. I wrote that true. one myself. I wrote that yeah, one myself. One. That was a personal one. There we go. I uh, got you with the uh, the dad jokes. Just shout outs to one of my uh, one of my guys in my chat. Uh, Mookie Manzer always comes in with dad jokes in the chat, so that one's for you. I wrote that one just for you. There you go. So, I'm glad you're proud of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So coming up here is the eighth and final chapter. It's going to start with a mini boss here that we're going to fight in a rather unique way. And Bug Doctor is going to exploit a little bit of RNG manipulation here. So what's going to happen is um, we're going to get in this room and there's either going to be a face or a hand that appears. The hand, we can't damage it and it will kill us in one hit. But the face, we can hit with a ray gun shot and send it into its cycle. We want to hit the face four times, but we want to manipulate it 
so that the face appears as opposed to the hand. So he's yeah. gonna grab this ray gun, he's gonna stand in this spot here and walk down, and this is going to heavily encourage the face to appear as opposed to the hand. So good. So we're two for two so far. Yeah, and the, the RNG is input based in this game, that, and that's kind of what set us off to figure this out. This is something that I spent a lot of time diving into this year, because uh, I kept getting eight or nine of these stupid hands as Bug Doctor just encounters two there. Um, and we we found our way through it. Uh, basically, holding down gives you a seventy some percent chance of that face showing up. Yeah. You only have to you can shoot that face as many times as you want every time it appears, but you only have to shoot yeah. it one time. So, so es es essentially, the, to kind of relate, make it relatable, the hands appearing is kind of akin to people who are familiar with the the speedrun of a link to the past and Aghanim shooting out the blue balls. That's essentially the same thing. Only that is less than halfway into that speed one, whereas this is like, you know, two minutes away from the end of it. Yeah, it used to be a huge run killer. Yeah. But I, I spent some time and I, I happened upon that discovery earlier this year, and that has made things a lot smoother for people trying yeah. to finish these runs out. At, ooh, low health, but I think yeah, I'm right. a lot of damage, but hopefully it'll be okay. This is the reactor. Yeah. We're gonna hope that we only get two of these golden globes. Yes, that's the actual name of the enemy. Well, we got oh. three, and the robot's gonna block us. Oh, that's okay. All right. Okay. All right. Two cycles here. Not the end of the world, but probably waste. I don't know. Hey, two hearts though. Six, seven seconds? Yeah, it wastes some time, um, but yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, not bad. Uh, right. As we come into final Zoda, this is the end of the game. Time will be on the boss dying. Um, there's a reason for that. You might get to see why that is. We'll see. Uh, again, this is instant contact death if we touch him. So we, uh, Bug Dodger is going to play it as safe as possible, but as fast as possible. Uh, he, he, uh, we can spawn the spawn, so we're probably not going to get the glitch ending that would have triggered the timing. Uh, but that's why yeah. we, we have a we end time on the boss. He can just go to the credits if you kill him without him um, spawning any of his little minions there. Um, yeah, he's kind of being a butt. Um, yeah. He, he just right. jumps around. Oh my goodness. And you kind of have to react to what he does. Um, oh. Here we fuck. go. <laughs> Uh, okay. You my he's one. He's almost dead. He's, yeah, he is almost dead. He takes 34 hits. He has kind of a weird health system. Time. How, he, how he works. Boom. Yeah, GG. And there it is. Uh, he still actually has an active hitbox until he starts that blow up there. That Buck Doctor just jumped through. So you could still <laughs> die to him. So you have to get out of the way when you hit the timer. But um, the time looks like it's... Well, I'm waiting for the Twitch stream to come around. I've got a 105.18 on my... I mean, I split a bit late. Yeah. Probably, yeah, probably it's 105, one, 16. One, yeah, 105, 15. That is an incredibly good time. That would yeah. be fifth on the leaderboards on its own right without any anyone else being in the way, or maybe sixth now. Right. Zero zero counts and, pretty close, but true. and 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 let's let's remind everyone. He took a 35 second detour to pick up an entirely useless apple. So yeah. without that, this is a 104, which is an absolutely bonkers time, especially to do um, in a marathon setting. So uh, again, you know, we, we I, I have to take this opportunity to just underscore exactly how difficult it is what what Bug Doctor just did. Oh, something else we wanted to mention too is that one of the things that makes this game really unique is the length of the speedrun that it is for an NES game. Um, an action it is, game. Yeah, and for for an action game. Um, I want to say we we pulled up a list. So, oh yeah, we pulled up a list here. Here are the other NES any percent speedruns that are longer than Star Tropics. Tecmo Super Bowl, Final Fantasies 1, 2, and 3, Dragon Warriors 2 and 4. That's the list. Now, pretty much all those, with the exception of, of Tecmo Super Bowl, there's a couple those are puzzle all RPGs. Games too. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some, a couple puzzle games too. But um, but that's basically it. So with this, so to to be able to execute and to be able to perform over a speed run of that length for something that's on the NES is something that that really should be uh, regarded because it's 
it's not easy to do so but again to do it in, in this setting as well as you did like like I mentioned before Bug Doctor took very little in the way of safeties throughout this run and he did it without taking any deaths and he did it in spectacular fashion so um, Thank you. again big shout Great out job. to Bug Doctor for, for putting on amazing, for putting on the uh, world record of, of any percent Apple um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey that, I like to think that Apple was the was the uh the like sliver of health I had for the bottleneck. So I'm gonna thank go. everyone That's who donated for, for the balance, Apple incentive. Yeah. <laughs> and Without the Apple, that would have been toast. Um, but yeah, this is the end of the game. We don't have to play it out because I know that uh, GDQ is on schedule. Uh, and since we call time on Zoda Death anyway, so I guess I'll take this time to just thank everyone who has watched this uh, watched this run. Thank GDQ for uh, accepting my run. It's been uh, means a lot to me to do this. Uh, I've lost a uh, number of family members of cancer, and uh, you know, screw cancer. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really happy to run this game for it uh, for GDQ. Thanks to commentators uh, Tantlis and Bonnie Vaughn for doing an excellent job throughout the entire uh, entire run. Thanks to uh, the host, Mr. Game and Show. Thanks to everyone, GDQ. Thanks to uh, the entire Star Tars Discord for being incredible. Yeah. And uh, all my family and friends for all the support along the way. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, play this game. If you haven't played this game, play it. Uh, and, you're missing out. And a couple things that I'll say here. Um, yeah, again, the Star Tropics community is absolutely amazing, very welcoming. If you want to learn the run, there's a video tutorial um, that's on there that helped me out a lot in the Discord. So there's that too. And please, please follow my man Bug Doctor. He does, he, I mean, he puts on shows like this all the time on his channel. Very good guy, very chill dude. If you enjoyed what you saw here, you will not regret following him. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we have become friends and I've become a part of this community. It's, it's just super awesome. Please follow Bug Doctor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Nope, no more. Frostwolf Knight sent in $100. I don't have a thousand to donate for that amazing boss, but here's a hundred. We had a $25 donation from Good Guy 3. That was an incredible Star Tropic run. I had to donate after seeing him beat that boss with half a heart. What a legend! Putting this towards the roundhouse kick cut scene in Sonic 06. Speaking of, let's take a look at some of those incentives real quick here. The roundhouse kick cut scene mentioned in that donation is getting awfully close. We are at $2,660 out of 3000 There's another incentive for Sonic the Hedgehog 06 for the Glitch Exhibition. That's at about 8500 out of 15000 so making progress there as well. And I am happy to announce to y'all, we have got our first bonus game addition to the schedule. That $45,000 incentive has been met. We will be seeing the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Glitchless Main Quest. That is going to be awesome. And with that complete, an incentive has opened for another bonus game. A challenger has appeared. If we can get $75,000 towards this incentive, we will be adding... Hades to the schedule. So get hype for that and keep those donations coming. Bentok sent in $25. Never beat Star Tropics as a kid, but great to see it destroyed as part of AGDQ. And with that, I have been told that we are ready to go for our next run. So I'm going to hand it over to Cha-Cha Max for the Lucky Dime Caper starring Donald Duck. Have fun, my friend.